Why are you unhappy? It's because 99.9% .9 of everything you think and everything you do is just for yourself. And there isn't one. All right, hey everyone, it's a beautiful day today. I'm heading towards uh, the Santa Cruz area. I'm going to Loke Lomond, I believe that's what it's called. I tried to go there before. Remember this? And I got there and it closed. Uh, <laughs> well, it is closed. <sighs> So I'm going to take advantage of this beautiful weather. If you want to join me, follow me. Guess what day today is? It's hard for me to believe that this happened again, twice in a row. <laughs> I don't remember seeing it last time. I even looked on the, the website and it didn't say anything about being closed on Wednesday. So now I know, maybe you all can remind me next time, closed on Wednesday. So, as last time, I'm not sure where to go from here because I'm kind of far away from everything else. But I'm just going to drive and let's just see where we end up.
Okay, so we are at our alternate <laughs> destination. Any guesses where we are? If you have a guess where we are, uh, put it down in the comments below. So I was thinking earlier today about happiness. And right now, I feel disappointed, a little bit bummed out. But does that mean I'm unhappy? I think that's something we should talk about later. Even though it's a Wednesday, it's very busy here today. Maybe because it's the summer, people are out of school?
earlier I mentioned about happiness. So I want to share with you something I just ran into the other day where neuroscientists have discovered that the left hemisphere of the brain is constantly creating narratives. These narratives eventually develops into what we call the self. Now, scientists have been mapping the brain for quite some time. They have mapped out the language center in the brain, processing, the understanding of emotions, pretty much every function of the mind, except for one. They cannot map out where is this self. And what they discovered is it's this self or this concept of self that creates mental suffering. I thought this was very interesting. Buddhism has been talking about this for a very long time, along with other spiritual practices. In fact, in the article they quoted, is it Wei Wu Wei? I'm not sure if I got that right. But the quote is, why are you unhappy? It's because 99.9% .9 of everything you think and everything you do is just for yourself. And there isn't one. I think this is an interesting teaching and it really points to Zen teaching as well. Because if you think about it, most of the time, most of our energy goes into thinking about ourselves. I'm not happy with this. I don't like this. This makes me feel. I want this, right? It's part of all human beings' human condition. And it's not good or bad. It just has a natural result. So just like as this study is pointing to, it's a fact that there is no self, or at least they can't find one, that that creates this false world and this view of that world we think is correct. And we've spent so much time living in this world that we think it's true and correct. But what if we start questioning that world? Start questioning our view? This is the essence of Zen practice. There was another quote in the study from Descartes that states, I think, therefore I am right? I think, therefore I am. Buddhism is also pointing to us that the sense of I or the sense of self comes from our thinking. But we would challenge that statement. If I think, I am. If you're not thinking, then what? <laughs> I think that is something that we should really investigate closely. A lot of people are very scared to look into this. That's why I don't, I think Zen is not very popular because Zen is really investigating the source of suffering. And that means, as the study shows, well, if mental suffering comes from the sense of self, then where does the sense of self come from? So we're kind of like scientists in some way in our Zen practice. What is this I? We walk around saying, I believe in this, I like this, I, I, I. But what is it really? And again, a lot of us don't want to look at that because it's scary. We think that if we discover the truth of that, we're going to fall into this void or fall into this emptiness. But emptiness is not kind of like this it has a dark connotation to it, right? Everything's empty, has no point. <laughs> but empty actually means quite full. So sometimes you'll often hear me give the analogy that original mind is like a mirror. The mirror just reflects everything it, as it is, right? The mirror doesn't have anything in it, it's just reflecting. But usually it's covered or clouded with the strong sense of self. So if you take this strong sense of self away, then you have this whole universe. So it's actually quite full. That comes back to this term happiness. I actually looked it up in the dictionary and one definition was 
not only is it a feeling of joy or contentment, but more important, it's the sense of meaningfulness, purpose. And really, this is what Buddhism and Zen is talking about, is learning or rediscovering, experiencing the purpose of being a human being. Usually when we think of happiness, it's based on conditions, right? So if the hiking destination I went to today was open, then I would be happy. If I made a lot more money, I would be happy. Or if I found the right person to be in a relationship with, I will be happy, right? It's based on outside conditions. In Buddhism, we say that this is just suffering. Because even if you get a good thing, there's always the opposite side of the coin, which is a bad thing. What does that mean? Well, if we don't get that thing that will make us happy, we're dissatisfied. If we get it, we cannot keep it, so we're dissatisfied. Or we have it, but we want more. We want it to be different. You might hear this teaching of true happiness. So I mentioned earlier, I felt disappointed and kind of bummed out. But if you're okay with that, meaning you're not trying to make it go away, you're not trying to grasp after something else, it's okay. That is what we call true happiness. If I'm sad, it's okay. If I'm angry, it's okay. If I feel a little bit depressed, it's okay. If I feel joy, it's okay. We don't have to self-identify to this narrative. It's just what it is. Thinking is just truth. Likes and dislikes is just truth. Opinions are just truth, but it's not our true self. So if you really want to experience this true happiness, investigate this question closely. What am I? Where does this I come from? Have the courage to really look at this. You're not going to fall into a state of despair. It doesn't mean things are easy or going our way. Things are just the truth. Everything is already complete in every moment. Then we're free from all of these things. Those are my thoughts for the day. Let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. I'll leave a link to the study down below. So I would also be interested in hear what you think about that. And as always, I will see you very soon.